You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 74. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Hi there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm delighted that you're here. I'm so glad you're tuning in because today we are talking copy. Now, listen, I know that I've talked about copy many times throughout my podcast, but it's a hot topic. Many of you that are growing your business online or you've been growing your business for a while now still struggle with copy, and I get it. I've definitely struggled for years and years. I always say pretty much in the last years where I feel like I kind of got my copy mojo, where I feel actually really confident about the copy that I'm writing, but I had to become a student of copy. So I followed anybody that I thought really knew what they were talking about and I respected the person. I got their books, I got their courses, I followed along as much as possible and I had to really do the homework. I'm the type of girl that like in school, nothing came naturally to me. I was a studier. I prepared. I guess I still do that in my business. But I always hated those people, but kind of secretly love them. Those people that it just came natural to them. Like they were great at math or they didn't have to do their homework and they were perfect at English or whatever. That's not this girl you're hearing right now. So with that, it kind of went into my business as well. And I've got to really become a student of something before I get good at it. And I've made the dedication or the commitment, I should say, to become a student to copy. And I hope that you will follow that. I hope that you will do the same because when I finally felt like I got that copy mojo I talked about, things started to become easier in all of my business because I would sit down and dread having to write a promo email or I'd hate the thought of even writing anything for a sales page because I had zero confidence in my ability to do so. But when that confidence started to kind of build up and up and up, And I thought, yeah, bring it on. This is exciting because you get to communicate your message. We're all passionate about what we do in our business. So what better way to spend our time than to actually craft messages that are going to get people to be just as excited about what we teach as we are to teach it. That's what I love about copy. So I'd much rather delegate all the infusion soft stuff and the, the backend funnel stuff and all the techie stuff. Like, no, thank you. Go, you can help me do that all day long but I want to at least really own the ability to write copy. Now, I've since actually hired a copywriter for some of the projects I'm working on, but the coolest thing ever is the guy I'm working with, his name's Rye, the two of us get to work together and he really understands my voice and I talk to him about what works and I give him examples of things I've written and and so I feel like sometimes it's more of a collaboration because I can never give away my copy completely. It's something that I always want to be involved in, so I still write my emails I still get involved in a lot of the different content that you see out there. So my fingers are on all of it when it comes to copy. I can't say that about everything else in my business because I have to delegate in order to stay sane. So anyway, I'm passionate about this topic and I really want to share it with you as well. Now, my guest today is Nikki Elledge Brown, and she's known to her clients as the communications stylist. Now, Nikki is fantastic at copy. And not only does she write amazing copy for her own business, but she teaches copy in a way that you really can understand because she puts it into recipes. There's a recipe for how you write copy for blog posts. There's a recipe for how you write copy for your sales page, for your video scripts, for your about page, for your work with me page on your website. There's recipes and she really breaks it down in a way that is very doable. So many of us get tripped up in terms of uh, how to write copy in a way that's going to get people to take action, to do something, to actually buy. She addresses that in all she teaches when it comes to copy. Now, the cool thing is that Nikki created the freebie for today. So each episode has a free giveaway. Nikki created it so you can get all of her recipes. This is a must download for sure. So to get the free giveaway for today, to learn the recipes, she's going to talk about them, but She literally outlines them in this free giveaway. You can get it at amyporterfield.com forward slash Nikki, and that's N-I-K-K-I. So amyporterfield.com forward slash Nikki. And when you get this PDF, I want you to save it. 
And every time you sit down to write something new, go through the PDF and find the recipe you need and use that because it will take you so much less time to formulate what you want to say when you actually have a formula or a recipe to do so. Before we dive in, I want to thank our sponsor today, 99designs. Now, I'm such a huge fan of this company because they can take care of all your graphic needs. We're talking logos, social media cover images, website graphics, and so much more. So visit 99designs.com forward slash Amy and get a $99 upgrade for free. Now, I love Nikki because I think she's smart, offers extremely valuable advice, and the girl just walks the talk. Like if you go to her website, which I'll link to in the show notes, but it's NikkiElledgeBrown.com. When you go to her website, you'll see that she makes lots of videos. She's constantly blogging. She has a course about copy and the way she talks about that course, there's no way for you not to want it. Like she knows how to write copy that will get you engaged and make you just fall in love with her. And who doesn't want to write copy like that, right? So I feel like she's the real deal in all that she does. And I love looking for people to interview that actually walk the talk and do exactly what they're teaching. And they're a great example of that. And that's what Nikki's all about. So I'm really proud to bring her on the show today. I hope you fall in love with her as much as I have. Let's get to it. Nikki, thanks so much for being here today. I'm so delighted that you're here. Yes, I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. I just have been waiting for this because you have such a cool way of sharing your content and how to write copy that we're going to get into all of it, but I'm going to give a teaser question that I'm not going to let you answer till the very end, but it's going to be a good one. Okay. So in the intro, I talked about you being amazingly successful. And one of the things I want to know at the end, so we're going to keep it to the end is what is your recipe for building such a huge, amazing business in about a year? So Ooh. we're coming back to that. All right. Okay. Cause I yeah. want to hear what you have to share in terms of how you've done what you've done. Okay. But before we get there, let's start from the top. So I've heard you say that you don't really consider yourself a copywriter. Rather you're an expert in communication yet somehow you have built a six figure business in about 16 months by teaching people how to write great copy. So can you explain how your focus on communication helps you write better copy? Yeah, the way that it all came about was because my degrees are both in communication studies. So literally the social science of communication. And when I was inspired to share that gift in a bigger way at the beginning of 2013, I'm thinking, okay, how can it be a business? Who would pay for it? Okay, well, entrepreneurs, because your booty is on the line. Like you would pay for it because you're losing money if you're not communicating effectively. And the copywriting element just kind of naturally bubbled up when I started asking people, what do you want help with? Because I'm like, I could help you with the awkward, you know, customer service email. How do you say this? Or I could help you with your public speaking. But people were like, copy, copy, copy. And about page, about page, about page, because we don't know how to talk about ourselves. And so it literally just took off from there. And then it was just kind of a matter of playing keep up, you know, because I had 90 something folks sign up to work with me one on one for that first summer. Yeah. Like by the end of my second month of business, I had over 90 people sign up. And the funny thing is, even though my my course is all about like writing your site, I didn't even have a website up yet. Like I had a (laughs) splash page, a rather unattractive, really super plain Jane splash page, which goes to show it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be shared. But I had all those people sign up to work with me because it was like, woo, okay, obviously this is what people need help with. And then it was a natural next step to turn that into a course. And then like, as you mentioned, it was crazy pants because it was a multiple six figure business by like month 16, like last August or August, 2014 was totally insane. It's just, there's a need out there. So I'm really happy and excited to share whatever I can share today to help folks with their communication written and otherwise. And I love, what did you say? It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be shared. Yes. My, my Such a good lesson. Know, it's like a, if I were a pull string doll, I say it to myself all the time and <laughs> I say it to my customers all the time. That's our biggest hang up. And that's like my biggest message for everybody. So true. And speaking of hang ups, one huge hang up, something that really freaks people out is the whole idea of writing copy. So what approach can you give for people to take that might feel that writing copy is not natural to them and they're really struggling to get their message out there? I think so much of it is the mindset piece. Not, not, I think, I mean, I know like, and this is really the case with all of it, which is, you know, spoiler alert for what I'll share at the end based on the question that you just asked. 
But I, I know from experience from working with several hundred entrepreneurs in my first couple years of business that we just doubt ourselves and we think of this writing, especially when we put copy in front of it. And now it's this different thing we didn't know existed before. I didn't know it existed three months before I started my business. I had never heard of copywriting with a W. So it's not like it <laughs> with has a to W. Be this. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And most people are like, wait, what's copywriting? And that was me. And you, most people would say that's what my business has been about to date. But it's not this thing or skill set that has to exist outside of you because at the heart of all of it, it's just your voice. Or if you have a product based business, it's your brand's voice on purpose. And you have to realize that your job in your copy is just to help people hear you before they hire you, before they sign up to work with you. And you've got to give yourself a break and know it's a process. It's a social science. And yes, there are so many copywriting heavyweights out there who have all the stats and the split tests and blah, blah, blah. That's great. And it's totally legit. It's just not my style. My style is about showing up in a way that makes sense, communicating in a clear way that's both clear and sincere and it's been working out quite well for me so far. So I'll keep preaching it. I love it. it. Definitely. I love when people are just teaching what's working best for them and it makes so much more sense and it keeps it really simple. And speaking of simple, you teach in terms of recipes. So when we're talking about copy, you start talking about recipes and this is something we really have to explore. So what do you mean by recipes? And then I want to get into some examples that you have. Okay. And the irony of it is I don't even cook. Do you <laughs> don't? Like okay. <laughs> Just hearing your cute Southern accent, I always think, oh, she's such a little cook or little oh, baker or something. In my husband's dream, you know, <laughs> I'm working on like my crock pot training wheels this year. <laughs> then Perfect. I, I do like to bake, you know, and recipes are more important in baking than they are in cooking. I think maybe that's what freaks me out about it because you can do kind of whatever in freestyle. I'm like, no, give me a recipe. And my <laughs> clients too. and customers are the same way. So the recipe kind of evolved from, like I said, that first summer I had the opportunity to work with my first 100 clients, you know, female, I think all but one. We had one dude, dream guy, Um, (laughs) but the rest of them were ladies all over the country in all, or not the country, all over the world um, in all different fields. And the number one concern, like I said, was how do I write about myself in the about page? And I know you just did a great episode with Melissa Casera on on that. So people can reference that one. Um, But that was clearly the biggest struggle. And so I found myself saying it over and over and over again. And eventually I just wrote it down in a PDF so that I could send it off to them after our one-on-one session because I realized I was saying the same thing over and over. And then when I looked at the recipe, these five steps, I was like, huh, this actually subconsciously seeped in from my public speaking teaching experience. When I was teaching public speaking at the college level, and I would always tell my students, look, you don't start off when you stand up there and say, hi, I'm Nikki, because Nobody cares who <laughs> Nikki is yet. Like, why are, we're not listening yet until you give us a really good reason. So we start with the attention getter, and then we bridge them into why it matters and why they should listen to us, and then that clear, here's what to expect, and then the clear, here's your call to action. And that's kind of just the flow of the recipe. So I started just thinking about everything in that sense. And when I knew I wanted to create a course, I thought, again, how you could help people with copy and communication in so many different ways, but what's like a really tangible check that box objective that people can have and write your site popped into my mind. So I was like, okay, let me go back and retroactively find the recipes and what I've been helping all of these hundreds of one-on-one clients with. And so that's how the whole recipe book, I guess, was born. Not to take the metaphor too far because I'm a commitment phobe and I don't like doing that. <laughs> where things are too <laughs> themey, you know, and like you get too far and you're like, why am I talking about that? You know, Okay, well, I got to take it a little farther. So let me ask you. So you basically are saying that there's a recipe for how you write blog posts and there's a recipe for how you write your about page or your press page or your resources page. There's a specific recipe for how you write each of those, even a sales page. Yes, absolutely. And And there's no one right way to write any of them, which is exactly why people get so overwhelmed by the blank page because you're like, what on earth am I supposed to put on this page? I don't know. I could analyze, you know, 70 different pages and then see. Um, But what I did to find my recipes was I went back and looked at my own pages because they were working rather well. And I looked back at what I worked on with my one-on-one clients and I was like, okay, here's the flow. Here's the order of events. Here's how we presented the information so that it checked all the boxes and tells people what they need to know to know that they want to do business with us or to know that they want to click that download or that they want to sign up for XYZ. 
So yeah, I, I like to think in recipes because I just think of it as kind of training wheels. I also just think in a lot of metaphors and analogies and word pictures, like the communication stylist is my biggest example. But because I feel like I don't want to tell you the right words to say, I just want to give you a structure, like a scaffolding that you can hang your words on, you know, then you fill in the blanks, you know, okay, I want to get their attention. I want to reassure them. I want to introduce myself. And then you take that and run with it and showcase the best of what you have to offer within the comfy, you know, comfy training wheels of having that recipe. As yes. A block. And I like that. That does give you a little comfort and a little confidence there. So yeah. let's break it down and make it a little bit actionable. Let's okay. say you're going to write a blog post for your actual content, some how-to okay. content that you know you can teach really well. What kind mm-hmm. of recipe are we looking at? Yep. Yeah, so with pretty much everything, any page that you're writing, I always recommend starting with the attention getter, just like I was saying. And I would tell you if you were working on a presentation for like a face-to-face presentation and with the attention getter, it's literally something that, and this may be something we talk about later, which is the copy bank that I recommend um, building basically a word document or an Evernote file or Google drive document of their words that they use to describe whatever situation or struggle or whatever it is. That's good. Because you don't have to think of it. I mean, so many people are like, I want to be engaging. I want to get their attention. I'm like, okay, then just listen. You know, <laughs> Listen, they're telling you exactly what they're struggling with. They're telling you exactly what they want. So literally take a screenshot and save that for your copy bank so that whenever it's time to sit down and write that blog post, you can get their attention right off the bat. I'm trying to think of like a recent example and one of my I think the video that I just put out recently, and it's just talking about if you're struggling to make friends because you're sitting on the other side of your laptop totally alone and it feels like everybody else already knows each other, that can feel really frustrating. How are you supposed to connect? How are you supposed to grow your network? You know you're supposed to, you know you want to, but you have no idea how. So that's an example of an attention getter. It's like, oh yeah, okay, what's she got next? You know, we want to just draw them in so that they know what to do next. So first step would be the attention getter. This will be like a simplified version of it. And then the second step is the introduction. So if you're doing a video or audio, then I always recommend saying, I'm Nikki Elledge Brown, the communication stylist. Obviously, you wouldn't say that, <laughs> but you know, fill in your name here just so people know who you are in the video, especially when you're syndicating it in multiple places and maybe they don't know you yet. You don't need to say that if you're just writing a blog post, obviously. But if you're writing the blog post, either way, in this intro section, you want to tell them what to expect. Like, what are they going to learn about? So this is where I would move into, in this video, I'm going to tell you my not-so-secret strategy for introducing and growing your network by introducing your buddies to each other, you know? So it's like, tell them what to expect so there's no kind of micro-anxiety because I feel like even when you're, and we all know this, whenever you've been in an audience of some kind of presentation and you have no idea where they're going next, you kind of get nervous for them. And then you kind of, oh, it's like uncomfortable. So that's why it's really good to be clear and set out that forecast, that preview statement of here's what you can expect in this blog post. Here's why you want to keep reading or keep watching or whatever. So we've got the attention getter. We've got the intro, which is either the intro of yourself and or the intro of the topic and what you're going to cover. And then the nugget. (laughs) The nugget. The nugget. Yes. And I came up with the um, the nugget because last summer I was making a series of micro lessons that were literally two minutes. I gave myself a time limit. I was like, this video has to be less than two minutes. So I just had time for one nugget. But maybe your blog post is a little more mega. And maybe you have three main points or five main points. But the nugget is the part of the blog post where you're actually doing the teaching and the sharing. And then the last piece is the call to action, which I call the homework because I'm a nerd. I love school. And that's what all my courses about copy branding centers around like school supplies and homework and that kind of thing. So at the end of every blog post, give them something really clear and specific that you want them to do. It's an easy win. It's not overwhelming, something that they're just going to be like, uh, no, not doing it. But give them something that they will feel good about doing and that you'll feel good about, for example, a comment, you know, ask them a really specific question that they can easily answer. And then that way you can keep building that relationship with them. So we've got the attention getter, intro, the nugget, and the homework or the call to action. And it can really be that simple. And then you just fill in the content with whatever stories and copy banks and information you want to share. So the great thing is a lot of what we're covering, especially with the recipes and what's included is in our freebie today. So so visit amyporterfield.com forward slash Nikki 
and you can get it right away. But so we'll definitely go over that again in the freebie so you can actually apply it and use it. But I'm glad you mentioned videos because putting videos on your blog is a really, really great idea. And I think I say it like every year, video's really hot. I don't really think it's never not gonna be hot. You recently did a video where it was really, really personal and you announced that you are having a baby, baby number two. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. But that video, not only was it so super sweet, but in very, very personal, but you also found a way to bring it back to them, those people, us that we're watching. So my first question is, do you do something different with your videos than you do, let's say, with blog posts? And then a question to follow that is, when should you be using videos on your blog versus written blog posts? Two great questions. So I look at it pretty much the same. Whenever I'm outlining a video, then I literally, I want to think, okay, what's the thing I want to say at the very beginning? Again, that's the attention getter so that they know they want to keep listening. I don't start off my videos with, hey guys, it's Nikki, because again, who cares? What if somebody just found me on YouTube for the first time? They don't know. They're not listening yet until you give them a reason to listen. So I do. I always start off with the attention getter. I literally introduce myself, Nikki Ellich Brown, communication stylist. And then I dig into the content, the nugget, whatever it is. And then I always end up with that call to action. So I still use the recipe. I mean, my, my friend slash she was a founding member of A Course About Copy, and that's how I met her. And now she's one of my dearest biz buddies, Tamsin Horton. She's like, your recipes are like Lowry seasoning. Like they go with everything. <laughs> and so, again, I don't cook, but I do know what that is. <laughs> so I imagine I'll use it a lot. You sound like a pro. Like I'm coming over for dinner soon. <laughs> right. Jeremy's really good with steak and grilling, so I'm sure we would use that. But, um, yeah, so it's seriously, this is why it's, it's A Course About Copy. But, again, I can't help but share stuff that's going to help you with communicating in general, in pretty much any format. So it's just because it makes sense, you know, tell people, get their attention, tell them what they're going to hear and why they should believe it from you and then give them something to do with it. And the second piece of the question, what was that that you asked? It was about- Um, When should you use a video versus a written blog post? Yeah, so I do both because I love video, which I just love video because I love connecting with people. And since I feel like a hermit sometimes- being 4,000 miles away, you know, out in Honolulu, then I feel kind of like it's my best way to connect with people. Um, So if you're comfortable on video, and even if you're not, but you know, you'd be comfortable if you saw the person face to face, practice it, you know, and just try it as a, as a medium, because a lot of people, maybe they're not really that comfortable writing. And so even if you're not following a recipe, you don't have this professional lighting setup, that's totally fine. The bottom line of what you want to do to build your business, again, it's not about being perfect or having a fancy website. Go back in the time warp and or web archive and look at everybody's previous websites. It's about connecting with people. You know, if you have something of value to share, then who are you to keep it from all of us? You know, like it's time to share it. So if you want to experiment with it and you feel like it could be a great way to connect with people and it takes the pressure off of your writing then totally just do a video and then maybe have it transcribed. And then you can go from there. If you're not super confident with your writing just yet. Now, do you have, sorry, just cut you off. Do you have a a big video setup, like the lighting and the nice camera and all that? Like what's your setup? For my course about copy videos, I, and I have actually a blog post I can give you the link to when we're done, but it's like how to, how to make a pro looking video when you're definitely not a pro and it's my faux pro studio. So I just set it up and I have my Canon T5i and my tripod. And then literally I had like a clamp lights that we bought from Lowe's with like a shawl, a pashmina shawl as a filter over. <laughs> Sophisticated. <laughs> it's very fancy. <laughs> and so I do, and I have a picture of it because, oh my gosh, the freaking white, the big old white thing that's like in a circle and you have to get yes. it back out when you try to put it back out. The, my poor husband, it's been in our bedroom, like on our wall for a year now. <laughs> Since the last time I used it, I haven't even used it in like several months at least. But I'm just like, no, I'm not going to try to put that back in the bag. By myself. It's so true. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about that thing that it basically is your backdrop and then you yeah. kind of um, bend it in a certain way to get it into a circle again. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. is almost impossible. Right. Yes, like I, I got gotcha. you. Watch a YouTube video very slowly and pause it and have a partner to help me <laughs> hold it back up. But that's basically any video, like a course about copy videos that you see, it is just the white background because I wanted to do it right when I did it last year so that it would last me a few years. Good. I didn't yep. feel like I needed to outgrow it instantly. 
But for my blog videos, I keep it really simple, and it's usually just me at my kitchen table by the window. I did recently upgrade and buy the um, whatever webcam that David recommended. It's like an HD Logitech webcam, and so it's a little bit – it's widescreen as opposed to my photo booth, which is what I was – Oh, okay. Using, just like the built-in one, and it's widescreen and HD, so I can go crazy with my hand gestures now. Nice. <laughs> They'll be in there, so – We'll see. And I'm about to, I have a twinkle in my eye of a, of a podcast and a video podcast. And so I do want to step it up a little bit for the regular stuff because it nice. will hopefully be podcast material. I but could see you doing a really awesome podcast. I'm pretty okay. sure that has to be at the top of your list. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Maybe well, yeah. after the baby. <laughs> well, it's really, it's pre-baby because my whole inspiration for it is I want to mega batch. Like I want to create so much great Smart. content. No matter what, I'm delivering value to my people and to my family without feeling whatever. So I'm about to go on a binge and I'm like, if I'm going to create all that content, then I might as well be repurposing it and leveraging it as much as humanly possible. So that's why I'm thinking about starting a podcast. So I'll step it up a little bit more, but still, I want it to feel relatable and approachable because then nobody believes you when you say it doesn't need to be perfect. <laughs> it just needs to be shared. That's so true. You kind of kind of got to stick with it. Yeah. 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 You got to keep it real. I and love that. Whatever you'll actually do. Yeah. Now, I was doing some research and I might have gotten this number wrong, so you can correct me here, but... Yeah. Did I read somewhere that you have around 4,000 subscribers? Um, you probably did because I haven't updated my okay. bio in a long time. Okay. Um, I've got just over 10,000 at this point. And we're talking about email subscribers. Yes. Okay. okay. So quick question for you. Yeah. When you finally hit that six figure mark. Okay. So you're making at least a hundred K in your business. Yeah. Do you remember at the time how many people you had on your list? It was about 2,000. Okay, everyone needs to stop for a second. This is this is a big, big moment here. So you had about 2,000 people on your email list and you were making at least probably more, but at least $100,000 in your business that year. Yeah, because it was when I launched a course about copy for the first time and I, I had set a goal for myself. I didn't know why, because again, I would like to highlight, I was making $14 an hour as a park ranger like two years ago. Literally crazy, so crazy, it, crazy. It just wasn't in my possible. Like when I started my business, I was thinking maybe I'll make $25,000 in my first year of business. And, and you'll with be all rich. Those people like the 90 something people, we had made 21,000 by the end of the sixth week. Like, it Wait, was what did your husband think of that? Because I remember when I started to really do well in my business and my husband right. looked at me like, are we doing something illegal? Like what's going on here? <laughs> right. So was your husband like, what the heck? Yeah, he was just like, what? I have to laugh and, and tease him because one day, especially once I got the Evergreen course going, he was like, you know, that green thing that you make money while we sleep, you know, the green thing. <laughs> oh, the Evergreen funnel. Yes. No, he loves it. He's so supportive and he just has this twinkle in his eye like, go, baby, go. You know, he's like so supportive. So awesome. I love it because I'm so proud of him and he's been working his buns off for not just our family, but all of America. Let's so give him a shout world. out. So your yeah. husband, what's his name? Jeremy? Jeremy. And yes. he is on deployment right now. Yes. Where is yes. he? He's out there in the, in the Western Pacific. Right Western now. Pacific. Okay, great. And he is going to be gone. Was it six months total? Yeah, it's usually a six or seven months. It's a long time. Yeah. So yes, giving a shout out to your amazing husband for doing what he does for our country. So, so very awesome. And I love that he's a supportive husband and cheers you on. And he, he likes his, his woman making, making some money. He does. You know, I had kind of given up on the idea of making a lot of money because I thought, you know, moved out after I finished grad school, moved out to Hawaii after we got married. And, you know, it was 2008. Plus you're on an island where everyone's trying to, you know, fight for three jobs at a time and whatever. So I just kind of thought, OK, I'll just, you know, work for paychecks of the heart because I'm again, I'm thankful I didn't have to work. I don't have to work. That's a blessing to literally work like you don't need the money. Yes. And so that was the thing with the whole six figure goal. I was like, well, it's not about the money. It's just, I feel like it's supposed to be part of my story. Now I know why it's supposed to be part of my story because I'm, I'm going to be writing my first book soon about the first year business. And I'm like, oh, well, that's good credibility there. So Very cool. Possible. So you had 2000 people on your list and, yeah. and you were, so I kind of interrupted you, got you off course, but the, the six figure business, it didn't just come from having the one-on-one -on -one clients. You had created your very first course, which is still a course that you sell, which is a course about copy. Yeah. So it was half and half because I had made about 56,000 from the one-on-one -on -one sessions, like my first 
eight ish months. And then I finally created the course and I was like, okay, people I'm launching this course. My goal is to finish this six figure goal in my first year. So the pressure's on because I only have three months to make 50 G's. How's this going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> and so that was the fire under my booty that I needed to just crank out the first pancake version of a course about copy. And sure enough, we had 51 founding members and it's a thousand dollar course. So that happened. And what does that mean? <laughs> the first pancake version? You know, the first pancake's a little funky around the edges. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, gotcha. Until you get your groove. I do make pancakes on occasion at least, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, the first pancake and it was so lovable and it was so great. And the founding members are like my ride or die homies who love it. And I, I assured them their value was only going to go up because the content wasn't beta. It was just the format that I was delivering it in. And, you know, I was like, people, I've got 10 years of experience teaching and studying this. I've got hundreds of one-on-one -on -one clients who can tell you I know how to help you. So they were all on board and it's been a really fun journey since. Now we have over 300 members. Wow. That's yeah. absolutely fantastic. I, I love hearing that story. That's why I first found you through our mutual friend, David Seitman Garland. Mm -hmm. I love that you threw his name out earlier. You're like, I think David told me did it. And I'm thinking, I don't know if everyone knows <laughs> who oh. David is, but she was mentioning David Seitman Garland. And so I guess he suggested the camera for you, right? Yeah, I, I can't even remember where or how I saw him mention it. Actually, it may have even been through John Lee Dumas because I was watching something he was talking about. But yeah, no, shout out to David because he his Create Awesome Online courses was huge in helping me figure out how I wanted to launch a course about copy for the first time. Which so. is so cool. I love that. And he's such a fan of yours. And he's the one who told me all about you. And then, of course, uh -huh. I fell in love. So it all comes together that way. OK, so since we're talking about making money and, and sales and all that good stuff, I want to transition into talking about sales pages okay. and emails that sell. Mm -hmm. And this is a big, big one for my audience because a lot of those listening have struggled with creating a sales page. One is totally daunting when you're starting from scratch. I even hate it and I've done a lot of sales pages. And so if you're telling me there's a recipe, I love that. In I forget, in our freebie, it, do we talk about sales page recipes? Yes, I can totally give you my my tips there. I mean, I have specific recipes, but for sales pages, because there's such a variety of things people could be selling. Yeah. I like to kind of talk about it in terms of four things everybody's looking for. Tell me. Okay. When they go to your page. I like it. So yeah. So the first thing is clear value. And I'll tell you how different ways you can achieve this too. So the first thing, most basic thing is clear value. Like why do I want or need what you have to offer? So you actually need to spell it out. So you can do this by bridging the before picture where they are now, which is usually your attention getter to where they want to be. And oh, sweet. What a coincidence. Your offer happens to be <laughs> what's going to get them from where they are now to where they want to be. So make sure that it's clear value. And you're really truly just explaining like what is actually in this program or this product or whatever. So make sure it's clear why they want and need what you have to offer. Clear value. Number one. Number two is credibility. Maybe if somebody's on your work with me page, it's a little bit different than if you have a standalone sales page, but you can't assume people already know who the heck you are. You know, maybe they just got here from who knows where or somebody told them, hey, check this out. And they have no idea who you are or why you're credible or why they should consider spending their hard earned dollars with you or euros or whatever it is. And so you want to make sure that you communicate your credibility in a couple of ways you can do that. One, straight up having a bio section. And so I literally on my course about copy sales page, it says, and in case we haven't met yet, it's further down the page because, again, that's not the primary thing. They don't really care about me just yet. Yeah. But once they're intrigued by all the content and what's in the course and blah, 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 they're like, oh, right. And who is this and why should we trust your judgment? And so that's why I say in case we haven't met yet and I have a picture of me and my guys, you know, and it's just like, okay, here's the person behind this sales page. And that's huge and communicates a whole lot. And another great way to communicate credibility is with social proof and sprinkling testimonials all throughout. So even if you're just starting out and you don't have customers for this particular product yet, maybe you've worked with people one-on-one. -on -one. Because again, I hadn't created, you know, there's a first launch for everything. And so I didn't have a course about copy students yet when I was launching it. But I did have all these customers who I had gotten feedback from with all my one-on-one -on -one sessions. So I was using their feedback to help people feel comfy knowing she knows her stuff and she's going to help you get results. And so sprinkling testimonials throughout that are results-based this is the kind of stuff where they can see, oh, that's my story. If it worked for her, it's going to work for me. Sprinkling that throughout is great for credibility. So clear value, credibility, clear expectations are huge because, again, we have this micro anxiety. We've never met you. We don't know you from Adam. 
And so are we sure, like, is this really gonna, is this really gonna work for us? And so this is why you see a lot of people with frequently asked questions sections on their website. And this is where you can think through what are the questions? What are the potential objections that they might have? What are they unsure about? And literally just get in her brain and maybe ask someone, like literally you can have a call and ask somebody, hey, what questions do you have after you read this? And use that as your guide. Or what would I be wondering about if I read all this? What's left? So overcome those objections and make sure it's really clear. This is also why it's great, like you do in your webinars, Amy, where at the end you're showing people, here's what's going to happen next. So there's no uncertainty like, oh, what yeah. happens? They go down the wormhole after I click the buy button. Like, what happens next? So you can literally help them see and see themselves on the other side and what it's going to be like. If it's a product, then you're giving them a tutorial on here's how you're going to use it. Here's what you can use it for. And the same thing with a virtual tour. If you have a course, then show them what's the inside look like. I want to know. And then it's you're bridging that gap and helping me make the jump and feel more comfortable with it. And so clear expectations are huge. And again, this is why I had all those clients sign up before I even had a website because in the sales email, I didn't have a website to have a sales page, but in the email, which ultimately became the copy for my work with me page, I was saying, here's exactly what you can expect before, during, and after our time together. So as soon as you sign up, I'm going to send you this email. And then during our first five minutes of the call, like super, I took it really seriously. Even when I was hosting free sessions with people, when I was just starting out, and I had a 0% no-show rate, even though it was free and they didn't know me from anybody. Wow. I hadn't done anything because I had super clear expectations. And this is why after every tip, I'm going back and telling you again, clear value, credibility, yes. clear expectations, because it just helps people. Like there's a lot going on in our, in our brains. So the easier you can make it for us, the better. And then the last thing is the warm, fuzzy X factor. It's the personality. And you need to make sure that your sales page represents you and the feeling that they're going to have once they are your customer or your client or your student or whatever it is. So that comes with the photos. It comes with your voice through your copy and the personality in there. It comes just with kind of the whole overall feeling and the colors. So if you're just using a template that they've seen a million times and there's nothing different about it, then how are they supposed to feel like energetically if they know that this is a good fit for them as opposed to somebody else who's offering something similar but with a totally different flavor. So clear value, credibility, clear expectations, and personality for that intuitive piece of buying decisions. Okay. So speaking of that personality type, you obviously have a lot of it. So it comes, (laughs) it oozes out of you and comes natural, but that's not the case for everybody. So first of all, I've got to tell everybody, you've got to get on Nikki's email list because I'm a big fan of swipe files. So I collect swipe files of those people that I love their emails. I always open them up and I love to read them. Nikki is at the very, very top of that list. So oh, if it's, they're awesome. So if you want to really see a great email strategy in action, Nikki's your girl. So I'll make sure to link to her website in the show notes as well as all the other stuff we're talking about. But speaking of that, I want you to give me some tips because Your sales emails, like all your emails are great, but your sales emails are like magical. I don't know what's going on, but (laughs) they have this feel like I literally think you're my best friend talking to me. I know you're selling me something and I'm just like, give it to me, girl. I'm ready. So what is going on there? I don't know how you're striking this tone and not everybody. Your personality is not going to fit for everybody. But what do you have to say about that? You've got to know something. So there are a few things, and one of the most important things I want to say, and again, thank you for all of the lovely words. No pressure, everyone. I'm going to take every (laughs) email. Oh my gosh, they're good. But um, the one thing I really want to nail is like, it's it's not about a certain personality type. It's just genuinely whatever you are, because if you try to put on my personality, and then they sign up to work with you, and they're like, oh, that's not it. Then you feel bad because you're like, oh, I'm not enough. I had to fake it. And then they feel disappointed like you did some kind of bait and switch. I mean, I would drive some people kooky crazy. I, mean, <laughs> I, I do. Ask my husband, <laughs> including him. Um, but, you know, like it's it's got to be you. And it's, you know, so many people feel like, oh, I have to be really witty or I have to be really blah, blah, blah. No, you just have to be how you are because that's That's how you find your dream clients. That's how you attract your dream clients is by showing up as you actually are. It's that's, again, part of the communication stylist analogy. It's like if I'm trying on Amy's shoes and we're not the same size or, you know, we're swapping clothes and this one's too big or this one's too small, like 
you don't feel confident in it because it's not tailored to you. So make sure that you're giving yourself permission to, if you're like the most flat, literal person in the world, that's totally fine. I thought you were going to say flat chested. (laughs) I thought, where is she going with this? (laughs) No, and I can totally relate to that. Except when I'm pregnant. pregnant. But, um, But no, like people who have a really dry or really straightforward sense of humor, then you need to show up that way. Like your emails need to represent you however you are. You're not trying to be cool. You're trying to be you, however that is. And that's, th- those are the coolest people, you know, the ones who like, so are true. Trying. they're just like, yeah, this is me. This is what you see is what you get. But we want to rein that in. So it's the authentic piece plus the smart piece. And so one of the tips I would give you for email or anything that you're writing is to think about the purpose of that deal. So whether it is your sales page or your blog post or a Facebook post or whatever it is in an email, you want to think about what do you want people to know? Straight up, what's the information? What do you want them to know from this piece of communication? How do you want them to feel about whatever it is that they know? Because that's how you can kind of style and massage the language so that it it portrays that, you know, nonverbal piece. And then what do you want them to do? Like literally, what do you want them to do? If you have 10 calls to action, and I'm guilty of this sometimes because I'm like, no, there's just a lot I want, I want to say this week. I do want them to come join me on Instagram and I do want them to come comment and I do want them to look forward to whatever. That's kind of overwhelming though. So the better and clearer you can be with that call to action at the end, yes. the better results you'll have. So. Totally agree. Those are some great tips. And I love that your, your goal here is just to be yourself. Let's not fake it. Really own that. And you're going to find your perfect ideal audience for you. So that's such a great point. And you have some writing exercises. I I saw on your blog, you have these Three easy exercises to rock your writing style. You're cool with us linking to those, right? Yes. And that was actually in another interview that I did with Kelly Higdon over at Zinni Me. And they lead a group of um, of therapists, which I thought is really cool. Like it's fun to speak specifically to direct specific industries. And I yes. think I'm going to experiment more with that whenever I'm promoting a course about coffee because I think it's really cool. Like, okay, these are the things that dentists really struggle with. <laughs> these are the things that I'm telling you, there's really some struggle with. There's yeah. a need for that getting really specific. So, so what I'm referring to, I must've found it over there where you were actually talking to, what was it? Therapist you said? Yes. Okay. But gotcha. it, it applies to everybody. So I wrote them down so that we could, we could cover them here too. Oh, good. Let's do it. Yeah. So one of them is, and I'll put them in our, in our freebie. So that okay. we have there too. It's going to be a mega. It is. This is a mega freebie, everybody. Like it's a mini notebook, but it's actually kind of mega. (laughs) So one thing is to take the BFF test, which is to literally read whatever you've written out loud to one of your best friends or to your spouse or even to yourself. Like if nobody else is around, you know, we're not giving you an excuse to waste time and be like, oh, I can't, I haven't taken the BFF test, but just read it out loud. And if you feel like a total goon burger when you read it, because it's not something that would ever come out of your mouth, that's a sign that you need to restyle it a bit, you know? And okay. I'm not saying that, you know, sometimes there are things we would say that in writing they would look weird, or maybe we would say them in writing and it's a little more flavorful than it would be if we say it out loud. But in general, like it's funny that you talk about my email strategy because I don't have one. But when I look back at it, I'm like, you know, if I have something to say, then I'm literally going to try to say it exactly as I would say it. That's why I like to accessorize and use bold and italics and periods and parentheses and stuff, because it's literally styling up the words to kind of help them have dimension on the page. When people read them, there's kind of a a flow, you know? And so take the BFF test. And if it feels totally weird, then that's okay. Just restyle. And you have to be patient with yourself. And I'll say it again, a squillion times over, you have to be patient with yourself because whenever you're trying to find your voice and people put so much pressure on it, but your voice could be different today than it was two months ago, two years ago, or two hours ago, depending on your mood, you know? So it's not like you're going to nail your voice and it's all this ultimate, you know, this is the end of the journey. It's always like, we're always learning. We're always growing and your voice is going to evolve. So just be patient with yourself and know it's a creative process. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get. So take the BFF test for one. We already kind of talked about starting a copy bank, but again, that's just creating a Google document or a Word document to make sure that you have a bank to draw on when you sit down and you're not totally starting from a blank page and thinking, wait, how would they describe that? What is it that they're struggling with? Because we could think, especially again, to use the therapist example, the kind of jargon that they have and that they would use with their peers is not the same thing that their clients are Googling and searching for, you know, like the terms that they would use. So 
yeah, you want to use your words, but when it comes to attention, attention getters and stuff, you want to use their words so that they know that you know what's going on and that they can trust you because you get it. So you can either proactively ask people if you already have an audience and you want to do a survey of some kind or actually call them on the phone, yeah. gasp, what kind of idea, you know, actually <laughs> talking to people like, hey, what do you want? What can I help you with? Or you can just listen. If you're just starting out and you don't have a big audience yourself, look and stalk people in Facebook groups legally, you know, not anything new, <laughs> um, but like follow people in Facebook groups and pay attention to what they're saying. If you have product-based businesses, check out what people are saying on similar products, Amazon reviews, follow the big blogs or the big Facebook pages where people, I mean, there's copy banks, an abundance of copy banks just waiting to be discovered, you know, for people who are working with entrepreneurs or female entrepreneurs, my buddy, Carrie Green in the Female Entrepreneur Association, she has over 200,000 followers She's got a lot of comments and there's a lot of insight. You know, she'll ask a question in like a photo image kind of thing um, with words and she'll say, what's your biggest struggle right now? And I'm like, hello, copy bank. You know, it's all <laughs> over the place if you're ready to look for it. Yes. And that's the thing. If you're ready to look for it and you're really paying attention, that's why I like little systems. Like I use uh, Snagit and I take just a little quick snapshot, put that snapshot into uh, Dropbox. And then I've got all of these little snapshots I can go back to again and again to remember what my audience is talking about. So as long as you've got a system, you'll keep doing it over and over again. Yeah. And eventually you won't even need to, and you won't, because it's just in there. Like I haven't looked at an actual copy bank in quite a while and you don't want to get out of touch, you know, but I just know, I know this is what they want. And it's, again, it hasn't even changed. Two years from now, I'm using the same copy, some of the same copy on my work with me page that was in those original emails two years ago when I was just starting out, like fantastic got the ideas, but the words just aren't coming, you know? Yeah. So BFF test copy bank. And then I think in the interview, I was talking about one more, which is basically to get unstuck when you don't know what on earth to write about. Yeah. And there are two ways that could go. Cause on one hand, maybe you don't have enough ideas and you know, people, she was talking about how many blog posts she writes. And I'm like, first of all, it's okay to give yourself permission not to do a blog post. You know? Amen, and, sister. Yeah. Like we don't need to just fill the air with words and we don't need to just fill the internet with fluff and uh, I have to do it because I said I did it and you just power through. No, you really don't have to. But if you need ideas and you know you want to add value and you know you have something to share, look for inspiration that's just out in the world. Like my first video blog it's called how running a business is like breastfeeding. <laughs> I mean, oh, wow. Yeah. And I was just saying like, hey, look, people, just because something comes naturally does not mean it comes easily. And I was talking about my struggle with consistent blogging because I was like, just because I'm an effective communicator doesn't mean that blogging comes easily to me. You know, and the same thing when I was a new mom, I'm like, what on earth? This is supposed to be the most natural thing. And it is freaking hard. <laughs> and so <laughs> My a lot of my audience is women and a lot of them are moms too. And so they're like, oh my gosh, I totally get it. It's great. And it's refreshing, you know. So look for analogies out in the world and look for inspiration out in the world. Because when you tell stories that helps people hang on to the info and process the info better, and it also showcases more of your personality and helps them get to know you better. So there's all kinds of good things about looking for inspiration out in your everyday life as opposed to just sitting at the computer and thinking, I have to come up with a really great idea because that's the fastest way to kill the creative vibe. And then if you have too many ideas and you're having a hard time, you're stuck because you're like, uh, I have a, you know, a spreadsheet with 200 ideas. Then I like to just ask people, you know, so what, if you, again, if you have an audience or even a Facebook page of a few people, or you just have a few clients say, Hey, what can I write about for you this week? You know? And it's just like TRL style, total request live dating myself to my 90s. <laughs> okay, you're way experience. too young to say TRL style. <laughs> um, but you know, like a mutual inspiration society is really big for me. Like I, I love knowing when I'm creating something that somebody's on the other side waiting for it and, and ready for it. Yes. That's honestly what pulls me out of my resistance and procrastination is to know, hey, Sally needs this bonus for her product based business. So you better get on it because she needed it like yesterday. So what are you doing? And so if you're stuck because you have too many ideas and you just don't know where to start, again, when all else fails, just ask the people you want to serve. There doesn't have to be an invisible wall between you. Just connect. 
So. Yes. I love that. That's fantastic. These are really good writing exercises. Again, we're going to mention all of this stuff in the freebie, but yes. w- now we're coming to the very end and we got to ask the question because remember, Nikki has built an amazing, amazing business in a very short time. She takes it very seriously to the point that now she's going to be writing a book about your first year in business and what that looks like. And I'm sure all the struggles and, and challenges that come with it. So tell us what has been your recipe for having an amazing first year of business. Obviously, you're beyond your first year now, but yeah. what was your recipe for that? The recipe was, and I can break it down into three steps. And and I've thought I've put a lot of thought into this. And this is why, if if they watch my free video series, this is going to be the first thing that they talk about because I call it the simplest way to attract plenty of dream clients without feeling like a manipulative cheese ball. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. That's, that's the title of the video because I'm like, look, you don't have to have fancy, flashy bells and whistles at the heart of all of it. What I know to be true, Oprah style here, is number one, you have to know your value. So you do, you have to be clear. Again, I didn't start, I wasn't thinking, I want to start a business. What's it going to be about? I literally felt like God was knocking me on the head. Like, dude, I gave you these gifts and talents. Not everybody's got them. And I need you to help me with that. You know, so I felt like I've got to share what I know about communicating and connecting people, you know, in a smart, authentic way. So know your value and what it is that you have to offer. You, you also need to have something to offer. <laughs> That's kind of a bonus. That's like one, one A and one B. Number two, know who needs it. So this is the dream client profile. You've got to know who do you want to work with, but who's struggling with the problem that you can solve and will pay you for it. Again, this is why I was like, okay, I could help anybody with communicating. I can help my friends write emails to their mothers-in-law when they don't know what to say or whatever. Who's going to pay for it? That's a really important question. And you have to ask. And then beyond that, the dream client and the dream customer deal is who do you actually want to spend your time working with? Whether that's a product-based business and you've got customer service issues to deal with, or it is one-on-one clients, like you're the boss. You get to have fun. You know, you're you're starting this business. So if you're not having fun, there's really no one else to blame. The the fun buck stops with you. So make sure you know who you genuinely want to work with. So know your value, know who needs it. And then number three, this will come as no surprise, communicate your value to the folks who need it in a smart, authentic way. So by smart and authentic, again, I mean clear and sincere. So it's not enough just to be like, this is me, this is who I am. No, you need to have a purpose and you need to help people understand exactly what, how you can help them, why they want to work with you. That's where the recipes come into play. And then you get to fill in the gaps. So know your value, know who needs it communicate your value to the folks who need it in a smart, authentic way. And everything else can just fall into place because you'll start making connections. You'll start making sales or start making money that then you can invest in the professional photos. I just had a maternity photo at the very beginning. Again, with all these clients, (laughs) I had a cropped maternity photo. I did not have a fancy website. I can send you a link to a blog post where I have screenshots of it, but it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. You have an offer to share. There are people who want and need it. So just find them and start connecting with them. Awesome stuff. This is so good. And, and remember, you know, if we, if you take anything away from this, where you should be taking like a million great tips and tricks away, but it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be shared. And I think Nikki's success is such a perfect example. Now I will say, if you go to Nikki's site and I really want you to do so, you'll be like, (laughs) what are you talking about? The girl's like super polished. This is amazing. I love this. She's saying that it didn't always look that way and it didn't start that way for sure. So you got to start somewhere and you can always, always improve from there. But most people won't get past those initial fears of it's not perfect. It doesn't look right. Comparing themselves to others. And I think Nikki, you and I would both agree if we did that, we'd never be where we are today. Yes. Honor the journey. I have another great post again, awkward analogy about biz puberty. (laughs) But it's like, you know, you you look back at your middle school pictures and the braces. And again, my husband and I have known each other since we were 13. And I'm like, oh, you loved me then. And that's how I feel about my like first subscribers and and clients and stuff. It's like, document it, dude. It is part of your journey. And it's going to be amazing as you plug away and you do the work and you figure it out as you go. You're going to love the awkward website photos, you know, the yes. busy, pretty face. So document it, screenshot that baby. Amen to that. I love it. Nikki, I cannot thank you enough. I have been so excited for you to come on here and I can't even believe we've never really connected in person because I feel like I know you so well, but it will happen. But until then, thank you so, so very much for being here. Thanks so much for having me, Amy. Take care.
So there you have it. I absolutely love this girl. I mean, it really helps that she has the cutest accent ever. So I love to listen to her and I always think she has so many great tips and strategies for your copy creation. So again, if you want to get that freebie that she talked about a lot throughout the interview, all you need to do is go to amyporterfield.com forward slash Nikki, N-I-K-K-I. So amyporterfield.com forward slash Nikki, and you can get the freebie for today, which again is basically her class notes from one of her paid courses. So it makes it even more valuable because it's totally free to you. But a lot of the content you're going to get is actually coming out of her paid course, which I think is always awesome to get free stuff like that. Now, she's going to give you many of the mini recipes for writing your blog posts, plus tons of other different things like your sales page, your about page, your work with me page, all of that good stuff, video scripts. And she's also going to give you a ton of advice on mindset and general rules that you can apply to you becoming a master at copy. And that is something that I think is incredibly valuable for you to keep moving your business forward. So make sure to grab that PDF. I think it's going to be incredibly, incredibly helpful for you. And in the meantime, don't hesitate to go visit Nikki at NikkiElledgeBrown.com. I'll make sure to put all the links and the details we talked about in this show on my show notes at amyporterfield.com forward slash 74. And finally, I want to thank our sponsor, 99designs. Now, you know, when you market online, it's really difficult to stand out from all of that online noise clutter. So how do you do it? Well, I think you do it through impeccable branding. And that includes your logo, your social media cover images, your website, and everything in between. At 99designs, you can get anything designed in just a week for a startup friendly price. So to give you a little something extra, when you go to 99designs.com forward slash Amy, you'll get a $99 upgrade for free. That upgrade makes your design contest stand out from all the others and bumps you to the top of the list so more designers can see your contest. So make sure to check out 99designs.com forward slash Amy. Thanks again for being here. Truly appreciate you tuning in and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com.